Today we're gonna do a keyboard shootout for your iPad Pro because over the two years I've had this iPad, I've got a lot of keyboards now. And I wanna tell you which ones I think you should buy, which ones are worth your money, which ones aren't worth your money, and just have a few, so I think a few are better in different situations. And that might help you make a decision about what you want. Buckle up. I'm gonna talk about six keyboards here, which is actually totally a lie. I'm gonna talk about five keyboards here because there's one you just shouldn't buy. Don't buy it, it's a bad keyboard. I had hoped, this is before we had trackpad support, I had hoped that the trackpad on it would be like, ooh, this is so much nicer now. It's terrible, <laughs> it's just bad. This one is called in the show notes, keyboard case for iPad Pro 12.9 2018 with touchpad. It's one of those crazy Amazon names. Just don't even buy it. It's not gonna be recommended for anything. Don't waste your money on it. Outside of that, the way this is gonna go, I just have a few categories that I want to highlight in which case I think is best for each use case. Starting with the best keyboard on your lap. And it's not gonna be the Magic Keyboard. It's gonna be the Bridge Pro. The Bridge Pro just sits solidly on your lap. The solid aluminum is excellent. Um, it's gonna come up in typing feel later as a good keyboard. And it's just a good one. It, it weights the iPad properly so that it balances on your lap well. The runner up is gonna be the Magic Keyboard though. And the Magic Keyboard is good, but the way it's weighted, it just wants to lift ever so slightly off my lap. Not a lot, and it's not gonna tip over but you keep feeling you wanna put your hands on the keyboard to keep it weighted properly and leaning you know, towards you. And it's just a little annoying. So the Bridge Pro is the one I'm gonna recommend, not the Pro Plus, because everything I've read about the trackpad says it's not really worth the extra expense. Best typing experience out of the keyboards that I have. It's gotta to go to the Magic Keyboard. It is as good as the Bridge Keyboard, which is gonna be the runner up here, but it's got that trackpad in there. It's just nice and it doesn't need a battery. That's the other thing, like it is just powered by the iPad. Now it's not nearly as good as my Ann Pro 2, my desktop keyboard, but it's still really good. It has no latency, it types well, the keys feel good, I can type on it all day. I like it. Runner up, Bridge Pro, that stable aluminum surface just gives you a good typing feel. It's got function keys, which is nice, um, but it's got nice keys. I still say the iPad has better typing func typing functionality if we just look at typing though. Kind of because of the trackpad. Best for portability. Now both of the keyboards in this section have at least one thing in common, two. One thing in common, and that is that they work with a smart connector. That means they don't have to have a battery. That means they're way lighter. That they're just nicer to use that way. And the first up is the smart keyboard folio. I totally poo pooed this keyboard. In fact, both of these keyboards for a long time about just not being valuable. But the Smart Keyboard Folio is really portable and really nice, and it really doesn't add anything to your iPad as far as weight. I, I like it, I think it's a nice keyboard. A um, Little low on travel, I can feel it bottoming out, and the lack of the inverted T arrow keys kind of sucks. But it is by far the best portable keyboard case that I have. Run up Magic Keyboard, it's heavier, but it provides a lot in functionality. It's got the extra USB-C port for charging. It's got the trackpad. And while it is heavier and you do notice it, like just throughout the day and never think, oh, this is so heavy. How could I possibly ever carry this around? I think back to like the ThinkPads I used to carry around in college in you know, 2001. And it's just laughable that we say this is way too heavy now. Best protection. It's gotta go to the Inatech iPad Pro keyboard case that I have. It's got these nice big rubber corners on it that are just gonna protect it if you drop it. When the keyboard's on, the keyboard is rigid enough that even if you like to drop it on something sharp like a rock, like a big rock or something, I am not worried that that keyboard is going to do anything to your iPad screen. It's just gonna be fine. Uh, it's excellent case. That was actually my preferred case for a long time. I used it for the better part of a year as my case. That's actually one Inatech sent to me I really like it though. Like I would, I would have bought it. It's a nice case. The runner up here is the Pro Case. It is a full wraparound folio. I really like, it's got a good protection. It even protects the Apple Pencil, right? Whether it's in charging mode, it has a flap that wraps around it, protects your Apple Pencil. Something that neither of the iPad, Apple iPad cases have. Um, or it has a little slot where you can snap it in underneath the iPad and just have it totally out of the way so it can't fall off, right? It just, it won't fall off. It'll be right there waiting for you ready to use. If you drop it, since it's fully wrapped, you'll be fine, right? Even if it's not fully wrapped, like it has more padding on the back and on the corners and it's got a shell and everything that will take the abuse before your iPad will. Best case as a tablet, it's gotta be the Smart Keyboard Folio. Something I always hated about 
portfolio cases or ones that had flaps that like folded around the back is that the flaps never stayed lined up. Like over time, they just kind of twist behind and it was just like a in the way it was annoying. But I realized probably took me two or three days with a smart keyboard folio to realize that the magnets are working on the back and it holds it in place just fine. And I don't need to worry about it. And that's excellent. It is just a great case to keep on as a tablet. I'd say the runner up here is the Inatech because it lets you easily pull the keyboard off. Um, you just yank it off and it's fine. And that, that hinge that lets you yank off the keyboard has stayed strong for me for the you know year and a bit I've had it. I, it was my main case for a long time, and when the keyboard's off, I can just stick it off to the side on a shelf, and I can, you know, cook and use recipes off my iPad, and the iPad is just an iPad waiting there for me. Now, finally, in which case do you get? I hope some of the my experiences with them already have helped you decide which case you should get. But I think that it's got to be one of the Apple cases. The Apple cases are just nicer. That, that's it. If Bunny is really is tighter, then you would go with the Smart Keyboard Folio. It's a good case. It's got reasonable key travel. You can type on it well. It kind of works on your lap. It's not stellar. Kind of works on your lap. So I mean, that's a really nice one, especially if you're a light typist. If you're mostly going to be using it in tablet mode, and then you're going to be typing sometimes, typing some emails, it's great. Even if you're going to be typing a lot, a lot, then it's probably just fine for you. Now, if you're a heavy typist, you really want trackpad functionality then save up your pennies and go for the Magic Keyboard. It's really nice. I know it cost me $500 Canadian by the time I did taxes. And I'll put the US price down here. I think it's like $349, might be a little more for the 12.9, but my goodness, it's, it's a really nice case. I've kept it on since I've had it for the last, oh, three, four weeks, most of the time. Um, the only case that I swap on instead is the Smart Keyboard Folio for when I'm just want to use my iPad, watch some videos over breakfast or something, and I don't really plan on doing any work, any typing. As soon as I want to work, though, I grab the Magic Keyboard. If I'm going to be doing a lot on my lap, then I have kids and they got lots of big kids books. So I just grab one of those and stick it on my lap, or we have a lap desk, or I have an old no parking sign that's beside my, um, my couch back here. And I will use that just to give the iPad and the Magic Keyboard case a little more stability on my lap. Because like I said, it doesn't tip over on my lap, but it certainly feels like it wants to, like it's, it's leaning that way instead of leaning towards me. And that just makes it feel like a better thing to use. Gives it more stability on my lap. You can find links below to all the keyboards you should purchase. Don't purchase the one that says don't purchase this one, but there's a link for it if you really want to see what it is. And if you liked the video, thumbs up. If you loved it, you hit subscribe, then the bell so YouTube lets you know what's happening. If you really loved it, then you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and subscribe to Patreon and help the channel make more videos. Have an excellent day.